Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back. So today we're gonna show you how to make a keyboard sustain pedal. Real super cheap. You need a momentary switch. I'll buy these for a couple of bucks. A project box, your choice of size. I'm gonna use a small one because I got this one that I haven't used yet. And uh, you're gonna need either a quarter inch jack and some wire or a quarter inch jack with wire. It doesn't matter what gauge it is. It's nothing that's critical for this. And of course you're going to need a soldering iron, solder, some flux to chain your wires with. Um, and you're going to need a couple of drill bits. You're going to need one that's uh, at least the same size or close enough to the size. So if you have to do a little bit of you know sand sanding to you know just get it that perfect size to fit it in go for it um, and you're going to need a drill bit of course to drill the side of the box for the wire to come out so whatever thickness of wire you're using you're going to need at least that diameter uh, of a drill bit for that job so we've got our wire already um, stripped and ready to be tinned so let's get that part done it's very important that you use soldering flux whenever you're soldering stuff, especially fresh contacts, um, because if you don't tin the wires properly, um, you can overheat them, you can damage the wires. Now, because I have some extra length in here, I have two options, I can cut it back shorter or I can add in a small piece of heat shrink tubing. So I am going to opt out to actually cut it shorter because you don't want these wires to connect with each other inside the box. Well, I've got a little bit past the tinned area. I'm going to have to re this one. That's okay. ready to go. Okay, move this stuff aside. So now you want to figure out a location for your switch. I'm thinking I'm probably going to put it right about in this area here. You know, that's a good spot for it. Uh, that looks pretty close. See if we guessed right on our drill bit size. I'm gonna have to take her up a notch. Better to under drill at first than to over drill and make it way too huge. And this one I think is gonna end up making it. be okay. It's a one shot deal. I 
actually that's perfect. So that's a 15-30 drill for this particular switch. Okay, so now we've got our switch done. This is going to be facing toward our foot, so we need the wire coming out this end. because you're going to want to tie a knot. So this way it can't get yanked out on you. That's lots. Perfect. So put this in. Now this switch was used before, so I should actually make sure the contacts are cleaned off. On a brand new switch, you will need to tin the contacts as well. Again, you overheat the contacts on this switch. You will cause way too much heat in there and bugger your switch up. Unless you just saw me use my fingers to do that with. You gotta be careful when you tighten these nuts in on these things because it is a metal nut against plastic. You do want it snug though. You're also going to need a star tip screwdriver or whatever type of headpiece comes with your screws in your kit. There is a metal plate by the way that comes with a lot of these boxes. You can discard it. It's going to be totally useless to you anyway. And you don't want metal top touching the top of the contacts of the switch. That just would not be cool. So I've already got a foot pedal that came with my Yamaha keyboard, but I, I like the foot pedal so much because it's a really good quality one. So I threw it on my Roland. Then I got to thinking, well, I really should have a foot switch for each one because you need this for the sustain. So, and I do play on both keyboards. So I thought, well, how much is a foot switch worth? Well, they're about 30 bucks and up for anything that's, you know, halfway decent. So I thought, well, what do I got around the house that I could use and just make my own? And uh, I already had all the stuff, so really, this stuff's been paid for a long time ago. And uh, so it owes me nothing. And uh, I can do a good project for this and show you guys how to do this. If you're looking for making a sustain switch for a keyboard, this would be how to do it. So, let me just uh, 
shut off the camera. Sorry about that guys, I actually shut the camera off too quick. <laughs> it happens. Too much of a hurry. Anyway, so let's plug in our sustain pedal and uh, see how it works. Now, for our first test, I'll just hold the pedal in my hand. Hopefully you guys can see this. So, that's what happens when you just let go. Now we'll hold down the switch. Let it go and it's instant off. So now we can put that on the floor where it gets to live its life. perfectly working pedal for sustain. Anyways, that's uh, pretty much it. That's how it's done. That simple, that easy. Now, uh, the switch I paid a couple of bucks for, I think it was about maybe four or five bucks. The box was about uh, six, so we'll say 11 bucks. Um, you're looking at probably maybe three dollars for the connector with the wire already on it you know so for under 20 bucks you know and a few minutes of your time you can build your own foot switch that uh, works perfect so now I've got a uh, sustain pedal for this keyboard and uh, voila now because it's such a small box you know and it is lightweight you know compared to really good pedal like the one that came with this keyboard um, if you want to keep it in one spot you could uh, put velcro on this and put it on the floor if you've got like a floor like you know surface like I do if you've got a carpet well um, well you have to figure that one out maybe just the one side of the velcro onto a like a really short carpet it would probably still hang there but um, for this I don't really care if it moves around in fact it's better if it does so I'm not going to bother velcroing it um, but it's going to be a pretty good durable uh, machine. I mean, you're not stomping out with a ton load of pressure, you know, and standing on the thing. So, you know, it doesn't have to be built that heavy duty. But if you're looking for inexpensive, this is definitely a real good inexpensive way to do it. And as you just seen yourself, it works absolutely perfect. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next video.